Last week we talked about getting ready in the sense of receiving forewarning, thinking about announcements that come ahead of time that allow us to get our mind in the right mind space and our lives in the right space in order to receive something that's coming. And I think about the ways in which we do that now. I'm always thinking about, okay, so here's our scriptural stories. How do those stories, if they do, connect with the circumstances of our lives? And so I was thinking about ways in which we anticipate things or ways in which our anticipation has changed in our lifetimes. And one of the things that comes to mind in this area of reflection is the difference about now living in the age of on-demand streaming. You will remember a time when television programming was an event. One of the major networks even made their slogan, must see TV. And you would schedule, you would plan your life. If there was a particular show that you really loved, that time slot was sacred. And you would be there on Thursday night at 8 p.m. or whatever it was because you were not going to miss an episode of fill in the blank. Now you don't have to do that. Now you can watch it whenever you want. You can binge 10 episodes all at once if you want. And you can see it on your own schedule. And that's a wonderful convenience. I am not going to be among those who say, oh, technology oh, is ruining all our traditions. There's good, and there's things that we trade off. And the great is that we can configure in ways that are much more personalized, much more diffuse according to different circumstances of our own lives. We can configure the ways that we accomplish things, that we encounter things, that we view programming. All kinds of things are customizable. And one of the trade-offs that we have made is that it has diminished to some degree our ability to wait. And in many circumstances, many people would argue it's not necessary anymore. That was a foregone time. We don't need to do that anymore. But occasionally, there is a value to waiting in anticipation of something that is to come. It is coming but not yet. And the things that build up inside of us and the ways in which that time that passes creates in us something that cannot be created with streaming on demand. And so in this gospel passage, we see a phenomenal adaptation to something that came as completely out of left field, to news that came that was a total shock, to news that turned a life upside down. And there is a tremendous transformation that happens between these two lines of the gospel. Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Just think about what had to happen between those two lines of dialogue. We've heard this story before, and for us, not being number one in Mary's situation, and number two, having a sense of familiarity with this story, it's kind of like, yeah, well, of course that happened, because... That's what happened last time, and that's what's always happened, and of course that was going to happen. But it didn't have to happen. In real time, in the life of Mary, in the encounter between this representative delegate of God and the one who was chosen to participate in bringing the life of God into the world in a new way, a lot could have gone differently. There are instances over and over and over again in our own individual lives in which God may call upon us and we go, yeah, thanks, why don't you ask somebody else? 
you know what, it's not really a convenient time for me, but I appreciate the offer, uh, maybe next time, that God comes to us and it just isn't convenient for what's happening in our schedule at that time. God, let me get back to you when I've kind of worked out these other things. Um, can I view that later on demand? The angel comes to Mary and says, greetings, favored one. And the reaction in the Gospels is Mary pondered what kind of greeting this might be. So already you know something weird's going on, something unexpected, something that caught her by surprise. God's good at that, catching us by surprise. We make plans and we configure things and we decide when we're gonna binge watch and how that fits in around other things. But God comes to us and says, I have something in mind for you. I didn't consult your calendar. I didn't put an appointment in uh, on your phone, but nevertheless, greetings favored one. And we go, oh, uh, okay. And that's what I imagine Mary doing. Uh, uh, mm, yeah, what do you want? And then there's this pronouncement, there's this declaration about <coughs> bearing a child and Mary's objection, you know, how can this be because I'm a virgin? And some of my friends think this is just hogwash. This is just nonsense. You know, seriously, the spirit of God impregnating a, a, a woman and the mythology about it being a virgin, and you know, that's just ancient myth. It's good to be skeptical. It's good to challenge. It's good to reflect and to think through how does this work? Does this make sense? And in some instances of gospel stories, the answer is, no, it doesn't make sense. And that's kind of the point. If God's involvement in the world and in our lives followed a very predictable script that is just like any other person, why would we want to worship that as God? It would be any other person doing any other ordinary thing in any other ordinary circumstances. And so there's something about this story that challenges credibility, that challenges our sense of logical reason and forces us to grapple with something that's quite extraordinary. Mary had to do that in real time. I'm thankful that it wasn't me. I don't know about how you would feel receiving such an announcement, but she was put on the spot. But we would be making a mistake if we stepped all the way back and completely disassociated ourselves from the spot that this gospel puts us in. What do we do with a story that is as fantastic as this one? How do we adapt to an announcement that catches us in circumstances, even when we've heard the story before, that are quite challenging? So there's this back and forth. And one of the great and wonderful and refreshing things about this back and forth is that it gives us permission to be in a back and forth with God. An overly simplistic understanding of faith is God said it, I accept it, that settles it. That's not real life. I saw that on a bumper sticker one time. <laughs> Wouldn't it be nice if faith was that simple? Maybe. But our relationship with God is just that. It is a relationship. And there's things that stretch us, challenge us to grow. Sometimes in the first instance, we're not always ready. Sometimes we have objections. Sometimes there are things that we don't think that we can quite get to. And that was Mary's circumstance. But it is extraordinary when you think about all of these dynamics that are going on. You think about the journey of your own life's relationship in Christian faith with God. All of the years that that has been playing out, the ways in which you have heard and felt God's presence clearly and the other ways in which you weren't quite so sure and it was muddied and cloudy and the times when you thought, God, are you even anywhere? Where are you? 
And all of that is always a part of the journey of faith. And when we realize all of those things, hear the response of Mary again. Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. That, I think, is actually the most extraordinary part. The virgin birth gets a lot of attention, and that's fine, probably should. The idea of a human being being part of God's plan, and some people will say, you know, there's ancient myths across all kinds of civilizations about gods interacting with human beings, and that's just one of the ways that humans have tried to make sense of the unknown and the things that we don't understand. Yeah, that's true. And it's also really important to try to make sense of the things that are so big that it's really hard to know in the limited circumstances of our individual lives or even within one singular generation. What does this all mean? And yet I think it is just as extraordinary the response of Mary as the idea of a virgin birth. She was called out in this time with something totally out of left field and said, here am I, your servant. Let it be with me according to your word. What would that be like if those were your words? God, I'm here. I got plans. I got hopes. I got dreams. I got fears. I've got a really, really defined calendar in my phone, and I can tell you where I'm going to be three Tuesdays from now. But here am I. Let it be with me according to your word. And maybe if something comes up in which you are leading me, I might even go in that direction over the thing that I already had planned, because I trust you. I trust your love for me. I trust your care for me. I trust that if you are guiding me into something, you are not going to put me in a position, in a situation where I'm going to be in peril. That's Mary's response. It's particularly poignant because of these circumstances that some people find so fantastic and incredible. The idea of the virgin birth and the, the scorn and the public shame that that would have subjected someone to, to say, here am I, is even more amazing. The rational, logical response would have been, heck no, get out of here. Do you realize how this is going to ruin my life? Here am I. Let it be with me according to your word. So I don't know how this fits in with dreaming on demand. What I do know is that we get into particular patterns in our life of craving predictability and getting comfortable in certain places that we have arranged for our own lives that feel safe. And that sometimes the life of faith is risky and challenging and it stretches us. And the inspiration of the main character of the story of this last gospel passage before Christmas is that that risk is worth taking if it's God who's the one who's leading. So when you are next in a situation where you are feeling a bit nervous, where you are feeling a bit threatened, you might reflect on being prayerful in that moment God, is this of you? Are you leading? Are you guiding? Are you prompting me in this endeavor that lays before me? And if your sense in your prayerfulness and your sense is the most important in that moment is that yes, this is of God, consider the same words that Mary used. Here am I. Let it be with me according to your word. Amen. Amen.